Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to give you a detailed review of this new fountain pen that I've just bought. This is called Black Noodle. This is handmade by my friend Drew Scape. You may have already seen this pen in an earlier video that I have published. Now, straight after meeting my friend, straight after buying this pen, I went out for one hour of sketching with this pen. So now I have a pretty good impression of how this pen works, how it performs, and how good it really is. So this is handmade. Now this material, this is Delrin. It has been polished to a matte surface. It feels very solid and the look and feel of this is indeed a bit raw because this is after all handmade. And this pen hoodie here, this pouch here, this is also handmade, hand sewn by Drewscape himself. This is very tough canvas, very nice. Drewscape only made five of these pens and I bought the last one. Now if you like what you see, maybe you can contact Drewscape and ask if he's going to make any more in the future. From what he told me, he said that it's very tedious to make pens to hand make all these five pens. You have to cut the material, you have to polish the material, you have to cut out the inside and you have to cut the feet. You have to source for, source for all the materials. It's very tedious and it's not worth the effort to make these pens to sell commercially. So these are the different parts of the pen. Let's take a look at the part that is the most important. Here's a close up of the feet that is made of ebonite. You can see two large channels parallel to the feet. This is for the ink to flow and you can see some fins cut on the sides and this look and feels very very raw because this is handmade at home this is how the cross section looks like so the ink would flow down the channels straight to the tip there so we have the cap, we have the grip section, we have this silicone tube which acts as an ink converter and this is the body. The highlight of this pen is its ability to be used with Zebra G nibs. So let me try and fit this onto the feet. Make sure there is slight gap there. And from the top, it should look like this. You shouldn't, you shouldn't see any uh, feet at the edges here on the top and on the, at the bottom. And then we can push this in slowly, hold it tight and push it in slowly. It will stop because there is something that prevents this whole thing from going in all the way. I'm going to fill this with the Atramentis Archive ink. Now this pen can take India ink as well because as you can see earlier, it's very easy to dismantle. Now once you fit the zebra nib onto the feet and put it into the grip, it's a bit more difficult to dismantle. Uh, you can't just pull it out like this. You need the help of something that is thin. So I use this brush here to push out the feet like this. I want to show you uh, what's inside. So you can actually see through this grip section, it's actually hollow inside. And because it's hollow, this part here, this can hold a lot of ink. And together with the ink converter, this pen can hold a lot of ink. All right, let's put this pen together and fill it up with ink. Now, one of the nice things about Zebra G nibs is this is a flexible nib, so it can give you incredible line variation. And the tip may wear out over time, but it's rather inexpensive to replace this. You can find replacements very easily. And this is one of the more popular nibs when it comes to drawing manga. A lot of Japanese comic artists, they still use this sort of nib. But the downside is if you're going to use this with a pen holder, you have to constantly dip it into the ink bottle to reload the ink. But with this pen, um, Drewscape has uh, made it possible to have the ink flow into the grip section, down the feet onto the pen nib without the need to constantly re-dip this nib into ink. There are two ways to fill up the ink converter. One is to 
put this all together and then dip this into the ink bottle and squeeze this to get the ink up but that is going to be very difficult to fill up the ink converter completely so i'm going to use my blunt needle and syringe to refill this the Atramentis archive ink this is waterproof ink so with this pen you can use india ink and some people actually prefer to use India ink because of the waterproof qualities but nowadays we get fountain pen inks that are also waterproof we can find them uh, we can find fountain pen inks that are also waterproof so let me just put the needle in let me put the grip back slowly make sure that this is upright so that the ink doesn't flow out accidentally all right so we will just tap lightly to get the ink to flow down it might be good to have some tissue here just in case the ink comes gushing out so now all the ink has went into the grip section so earlier on you may have noticed that I filled up quite a large amount of ink here but most of the ink now has moved into the grip section so if you really want to fill this up to its maximum capacity this can really hold a lot of ink but um, I probably wouldn't want to do that because um, if there's too much ink maybe the ink may actually overflow and come gushing out with normal usage, ink gushing out shouldn't be a problem. Just don't tap the pan um, violently. I just remembered something I wanted to show you and it's the screw thread here. So you see this little uh, extra piece of plastic that wasn't pulled off. So this is handmade. This is very raw. This is what you get with handmade products. I think it's quite cool actually. You have to wait for the ink to flow through the feet and below the nib. Now if you see this hole here, if it's filled with ink, that means it's wet enough for writing or drawing. So yesterday I tested the pen with rotring ink and for some reason the ink actually feathers on this Bristol board paper. It shouldn't do so but I'm not sure why the ink and this paper combination it feathers. So now I'm using the Atramentus. So I can press down for really thick strokes and if you damage the nib for whatever reason if you drop this on the ground and the nib is bent you can replace the nib so easily so this is the Artramentis archive ink oops I spelled it wrongly ink flow is fantastic I'm not sure if you can see this properly but the ink is still wet because the pen lets out so much ink you are going to have a lot of ink on paper and this is going to take much longer to dry if you want to use this ink with watercolor you have to make sure that the ink is completely dry if not you're going to get some nasty surprises because the zebra nib it's quite sharp it's going to feel a bit scratchy this is fantastic this pen is great for hatching so you can get really thin lines and really thick lines depending on how much pressure you apply so now with this pen you can use the zebra knit without the constant need to having to refill it and it's really convenient you have the extra line variation from this flexible nib from this deep pen nib but you don't have to constantly redo it you don't have to bring your ink bottle out with you if you are sketching outdoors and you can bring this pen around very easily you can just put this pen into your pencil case this is a really nice nib to draw with so you can control the line thickness just by the pressure 
and if you want thin lines you can get them so easily this is great for very delicate work these lines they are about as thin as you can get with a zebra nib let me show you the sketch that I drew yesterday with the pen. Now for the gray areas, I colored them with this Pentel color brush pen that has been reloaded with Noodler's Lexington Gray ink. And for the black areas, it's with this Sailor brush pen. So I drew the lines first and then I added the grays and the blacks with the brush pens. So here we have thin lines and here we have a mixture of thin and thin thick lines and even for this line you can see some line variation for this white on black it's um, this part here this white areas here they were drawn with the white gel pen so here you can see some variation as well so as I press down hard the lines they are thicker and you may notice some splatter marks. I created the splatter marks with the brush pen. Basically what I did was to use the brush pen like this, have the bristles against the metal tip here, and then brush it to create those splatter marks. We have more lines and splatters here. This ink is rotring ink. It feathers slightly, but it may not be obvious to see in this um, video for elements in the background i use thinner lines and for elements in the foreground i use thicker lines and i also use thicker lines for any object that i want emphasis on so with this lamppost you can see i have very thick lines for the edges here and within the lamppost i use thin lines Very thick boundary lines here. And for the background, for these people, I use thinner lines. And for this electric box here, again, thicker lines for the outlines. A few years ago, I made a video on how you can use a Zebra GNIP with a Jinhao X750 fountain pen. Now, this pen well it can hold a zebra gene but the ink flow wasn't that great because the feed wasn't designed for deep nibs like this now this sort of nibs it requires a lot of ink so the ink flow wasn't able to catch up with this um, pen and because of that the lines it keeps skipping there's a problem with getting the nib out as well because this is very tight i actually need to use pliers to remove the nib and the feet and because of that i actually damaged the feet section here you see the fins they are all bent so i haven't used this pen much since then since a few years ago so now i have a new fountain pen and this works great it feels very raw i like the handmade look and feel of this it's really very nice so this pen is no longer being made but if you really want it maybe you can pester drew scape to get him to make another batch because it's really a good pen so that's all for today's review thanks for watching see you in the next video bye